Good evening, it's uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets for end of days trading the uh, Monday, the uh, 28th of November 2016. Be sure to visit Trade Signal, signals and market updates from leading providers at uh, www.tradesignal.com and certainly download the app at the Google Play and the Apple App Store. Okay, now let's try and uh, decipher the uh, end of days uh, market numbers and let's try and crunch together uh, the uh, stats and the uh, fundamental news flow and see exactly where the bias lies. Uh, in terms of uh, Asian markets, I did uh, explain in my uh, morning video that the Nikkei was certainly uh, slightly weaker. The uh, Shanghai is certainly higher, up 0.4, 0.5%. The rally certainly continues there. Uh, in terms of European session, the FTSE closed down 41 points, DAX down 116 and CAC down 40. So more or less uh, between 0.6 to 1% sell-off. The DAX really was the weakest today. Uh, the FTSE MIB really led the uh, sell-off almost down 2% on the back of uh, Italian bank concerns. We had Monte Pashi down, uh, limit down almost 15%. So that certainly isn't good news. And you had the Euro stocks down as well. Okay, so certainly the uh, the theme really today was one OPEC, uh, although oil prices have rebounded back to 47 now from 45. So certainly some uh, confusion there uh, in terms of the, the early story was that the Saudis certainly went on board and uh, given the fact that uh, they were attending the meeting and then all of a sudden they did a U-turn and apparently one of the delegates attended. And now we have the Iranians and the Russians now apparently the latest uh, uh, comments that are coming out from there. I'll just read them to you. Russian, le uh, Russian Iranian leaders noted importance of working with OPEC on price stabilization. Russian and Iran leaders discussed close cooperation on commodity markets including OPEC, etc, etc. Com OPEC committee has no agreement so far, no changes in Iraq and Iran position. So make of it what you want okay this is one of the reasons why i don't trade oil um okay if i ever do it's very very rarely there really is no um a real uh, fundamental basis for the news it's all based on hearsay and counter statements and rumors and so on and so forth so that's not what you trade on okay that's not solid fundamentals at all okay and uh, there's a lot of volatility in there as well i mean you're looking at a 200 point spike on either side so again um, it's not really it's not a viable strategy anyway going forward okay so in terms of um, OPEC again I think we're back to square one okay nobody knows really what's going on okay uh, we have this meeting apparently that's going to be his tentative agreement apparently uh, OPEC has released a tentative schedule for Wednesday the 30th and again we're none the wiser okay we're none the wiser all we're doing really is reacting of support and resistance on oil now talking about support and resistance on oil let's bring up the chart of oil Okay, so uh, bringing up the one hour chart here, we can see we had a pivot high at 49. This was on around, I think it was 22nd of Tuesday. Obviously, we've uh, we've certainly moved lower ever since we hit a pivot low of 45, and then we subsequently bounced. Looking at the daily chart, you can see why we bounced. We actually hit that horizontal support. There is an unfilled gap below at 44, mind you. Okay, so just bear that in mind. Given the fact that these um, these individuals just can't agree. And all we're getting is statements after statement after statement saying, oh, yes, we will stabilize prices. Oh, yes, we'll do this. Oh, yes, we'll do that. And yet they're pumping, increasing their uh, output of oil and are pumping at records. So I'm not sure exactly what they're doing. It's, uh, it's more about talk it up, OK, and pump as much as you can. OK, so because nobody's going to agree. So it's more about talking, no action. And that certainly isn't going to stabilize prices at all. So again, certainly uh, take that on board. Now, we did actually get a uh, potential increase to growth. Uh, OECD increases growth forecasts. So again, that was that certainly helped the uh, price of oil to a large extent. So just bear that in mind. So given the fact that they've uh, increased uh, growth forecasts, certainly increases demand for oil. And that certainly did help oil off the $45 level as well. Uh, of Asian markets, obviously China was higher as well, and also 2017 growth forecasts were raised too. And now we have this potential talk uh, or ongoing talk between the Iranians and Russians. Certainly, is a potential positive single uh, signal. But again, it's it's subjective. It's subjective. I mean, we could you could certainly use that signal now to short the price of oil. I mean, look at the uh, oil price now potentially topping out back to previous support equals resistance in this region here, and this may well be a potential uh, technically a good argument to short the short the. Uh, the crude oil okay market so again it's certainly again like i said like it's a very very subjective uh, as always fundamentals is a subjective science okay so from my perspective you are into resistance and you are looking at equity markets stalling 
Okay, so in terms of uh, other economic data today, after Mr. Draghi, Mr. Draghi was very neutral. Nothing, I can't see anything of any importance for Mr. Draghi. That, I mean, it was just a same old speech. We will support the market, etc., etc. I mean, nothing really different. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, euro, euro has been quite volatile today. Let's bring up the price of euro as well. Given the fact that, uh, again, I'm going to touch upon the next potential uh, shoot drop, which is uh, potentially Italy and France. So you can see that we did actually spike up to 1.0670, and then we reversed the whole move back down 100 pips. Okay, so interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Okay, folks, in terms of the next move on the euro again, uh, the political uncertainty really is the uh, dominant theme with France uh, electing Mr. Fillon, and obviously uh, we have... Um, the uh, Italian uh, potential uh, re well, referendum, well, Italian referendum in terms of a lot more of a referendum, more of a uh, uh, in-house political move. Okay, so again, if Mr. Renzi loses power, loses his vote, and the predominant theme is that it will be a no vote, then uh, we certainly are back to square one in terms of the eurozone, and that will be negative. Okay, and that's one of the reasons why the uh, Italian banks were down almost fifty percent, fifteen percent. Uh, Montebashi will certainly limit down at one point. So again, in indicating risk aversion. And now, in terms of um, technicals, really, it's all about the H and S. I'm not even going to look at other daily and weekly charts and ten minute charts, etc. The, the whole focus really is on H and S. So now we have made a lower low and lower high. Okay, so a lower low was certainly made today at ten five fifty. Okay. So uh, the next potential move is towards 10.430, which is gap fill. Okay, I, there's no other argument here in terms of the German DAX moving higher. Okay, from my understanding, my perspective, given the uh, bearish news flow. <coughs> also, given the fact that the way US markets are positioned as well, which I'll certainly discuss. Now, looking at the uh, French CAC as well, same for formation, folks. All eyes on the H&S. It's not been drawn here. I'll just draw it for you. Okay, so it's all about the H&S. Left shoulder is here head here okay and obviously your right shoulder now we're looking to flush okay so again looking to move lower on the french cac as well let me just draw this properly bear with me okay okay here we go right okay so h and s formation in terms of the um, the move lower okay so you have your right shoulder is going in now. Your pivot high is uh, 4570. So let's look at the uh, potential target. Uh, HNS equals 4570 minus your neckline. If you take it down, you're looking at uh, 4500. So 4570 minus 4500, your target is 4430. So there you go. Okay, so looking at 4430 target on the downside. So again, uh, we are certainly uh, facing a bearish bias and therefore looking to move lower given the fact that we did hold 75% resistance as well for the uh, right shoulder or the lower high and now we're looking and searching for a lower low and that's obviously led by the fundamental trade which is the uh, concerns over Italy and France okay For C100 okay again this gyrated a lot today as well okay so we certainly seem to be making either a base here at 46770 or 6780 or we're looking to potentially break lower okay so take your take your pick okay from my perspective take your pick we haven't made a lower low so again that's certainly one potential positive uh, outcome but we failed to make a higher high so again either whether it's sideways consolidation now mr carney did mention that he wants uh, the uh, Brexit delayed for, more, for almost two years in order for them to adjust and adapt, okay, and embrace Brexit, uh, and that again raises Brexit concerns. And and we also had the fact that um, oil prices are gyrating, okay. So again, FTSE is very sensitive to oil, and oil prices will certainly help and dictate the next potential move here as well, okay. So bear that in mind. Right, so looking at the uh, ten-minute chart on the FTSE 100. Again, double bottom has been put in at that four of uh, six seven eighty zone. Sorry, so again, watch for six seven eighty. Okay, uh, six seven eighty really is a zone. If we crack six seven eighty, then obviously we move lower. Six seven seventy, sorry, is a zone. If we'll crack that, we move lower. Okay, so neutral day, and more of a neutral day, I'd say, in terms of FTSE. But looking at the daily chart and weekly chart, you can clearly see that uh, this market certainly is bearish and looking to potentially trigger this HNS formation. So your left shoulder is here, your head. Okay, and then this right shoulder that's been brewing, and down we go. And the only way we're going to trigger this H&S pattern, remember that, is the fact that oil prices have to start to move lower. Okay, so if oil closes that gap, which I showed you before at 44, 
and given the fact that OPEC, I don't fail to, to agree anything at all, which is looking very high, very highly likely as well. It's all about talking and no action. Then you are looking at a flush here as well. Now, the US markets are going to have an instrumental role here. The reason why I say that is because US markets have uh, certainly become very top heavy. And given the fact that the US markets are top heavy, when they roll over, they are going to take the European markets with them. Okay. Now, I'm currently, my active trade at the moment is currently short the NASDAQ, okay? So you can see here, ever since we closed that gap on the NASDAQ, it certainly has remained very, very weak. It has remained vulnerable. It certainly is being held by this Cyber Monday talk and hype, etc., and uh, obviously Black Friday, so on and so forth. And, and certainly the num numbers are not exactly spectacular and certainly are indicating weakness. So 60-minute chart on the NASDAQ, my uh, thesis really is the fact that we are going to... I was expecting a H&S formation that has failed thus far. Okay, so my uh, aim now really is to potentially hold this double top, which is here. Double top formation is expected to be held, and then obviously looking to flush, looking to flush down to 4830 on the, uh, the NASDAQ. So look for 4830 below. Again, if that fails, and you are looking at 4810. Okay, so 4830, 4810 is the potential zone for the NASDAQ. And then again, you do have another gap at 4700. So you can see how the NASDAQ is certainly vulnerable. You have two gaps below. Okay, you have bearish economic data. And really, you put them uh, two uh, jigsaw puzzles together and uh, you certainly have a pattern that's indicating lower from my understanding. So again, everybody has their own understanding and interpretation. So stick with it. Stick with your own trading strategy. But this is just, I'm just putting out an argument, okay? That's exactly what I'm trying to do, put out an argument. You certainly close the gap, so therefore resistance, you held horizontal resistance, you put intraday double top. The only next move really from my perspective is going down, going down to 4850, potentially even lower. So looking for a flush, and again, bear in mind, you've got that gap at 4810, okay? The gap at 4810, that will act as a magnet. So again, my understanding, my, my perspective, my interpretation is that we're moving lower and heading south based on the NASDAQ alone, okay? Uh, adding the fact that you have H&S formations on the CAC, on the Euro stocks and DAX. We know exactly where we're going. That's south, okay? S&P 500 really has been stubborn, but not stubborn enough to close the gap above, okay? So again, that's not exactly a positive sign, given the fact that last week we continued to move higher, rip higher, make new highs. That hasn't been the case today, okay? And again, uh, a strong case now can be made for a left shoulder here, okay? Your head is gone in here, okay? And now we're looking to make a right shoulder and looking to flush, okay? So from my understanding, my perspective here, you're looking for a H&S formation. And uh, this flush of the H&S formation, your potential target, you're looking at 200 MA below. And you're looking for a lower high. Even though the daily charts are very, very bullish, but we all know that's been the case due to, you can argue for light volume, you can argue anything. But from my understanding, it certainly is a uh, weakness due to political uncertainty in Europe, which is going to weigh on the US, okay? Uh, we have a Asian markets into resistance as well. I'm going to do a separate video on the US, actually. Uh, hopefully soon and uh, put that out for you as well okay so weakness in the S&P weakness in the Nasdaq basically going to be projected into the Asian session Asian session weakness is going to be projected in the European session and vice versa European is going to support the, uh, the bearish argument there as well and you are looking for a royal royal flush okay looking for exceptional weakness with the uh, with certainly no catalyst to call close the gap at 2230 now looking for a royal flush okay on that note, be sure to visit cfds.com for your trading needs and certainly take advantage of the bonus. Goodbye now.